Welcome. We're here on the literary stage in the Fine Arts Galleria at the San Mateo County Fair. I'm Darlene Frank from the California Writers Club, San, San Francisco Peninsula Branch. And today I'm excited to talk with Barty Rosman Kudrin, who is literary director of the Fine Arts Galleria, and Boris Kudrin, who is director of the Fine Arts Galleria. The Galleria and the literary stage are two of the fastest growing divisions in the fair due to the work and the vision of these two amazing people. Boris and Barty have been involved in the fair since 2008. They are well known in the Peninsula Arts community. Barty was a segment interviewer for a San Bruno cable show and has won community service and literary awards. And in this conversation, you will find out about the frenzy that takes over their lives each year as they ramp up to open the stage and the Galleria. So I thank you both for being willing to participate in this interview today. We've been waiting a long time to get the two of you together to talk about the fair on stage here at the fair. Well, thank you for doing this, Darlene. We're happy to be here on the other side of the stage, so to speak. <laughs> Okay, um, before we get into uh, some of the details, Boris, I wonder if you could give us a very brief overview of what happens on the literary stage and in the Fine Arts, in the fine arts Galleria for people who might not know um, what wonderful opportunities are available here for artists and writers every year. I'm just looking for the very brief, high-level summary. We have a cell phone crisis. The cell phone crisis, okay. Just turn it off. This is what happens at the fair. Yeah. Right, really live here. <laughs> My life is a series of interruptions here. Um, well, the fair is, is multi-leveled uh, to begin with. It's, it, it starts with um, intake of art and literary, and, um, and then goes through a process, a metamorphosis, that brings it to what you see here, which is a visual display. But in between the intake and the visual display is a lot of different things that happen, uh, from judging to uh, arranging to uh, uh, props uh, to act building the walls. Um, there's, a, there's a whole things that, a whole series of things that happen to bring it to this stage here, but um, and it takes a lot of people to do it. And, like one of the things that we value here mostly is uh, not not just the contributing art, but the volunteerism that takes place here and brings it to this stage. And without the volunteers, we would have nothing. Uh, and so it is very much a community enterprise. Um, uh, um, well, yeah, it is, it is very much a community enterprise, and it, it takes a village, I like to say. I think sometimes it takes two villages to get everything done, so um, it's quite a process. Well, great, and, and as a writer in the California Writers Club, I know that this is just an amazing opportunity for us to come here and be able to schedule a stage to do, for any writer to schedule a stage to do whatever they want for half an hour or an hour. And um, artists the same can exhibit their work. So there's a lot of opportunities here every year. It's really, it's really a, um, quite a gift. Um, Barty, I wonder, I know you have some interesting stories about how this all started. I mean, why did you, how did you get, in start, get started in the literary stage and why did you, um, what inspired you to take on the director's role? Well, uh, it all started in 2008 when they asked Boris and myself to be judges. And so we came down to the event center. We had been to the fair in years past when our son was a 4-H exhibitor with rabbits and such, but we hadn't taken much time. And there was a lovely fine arts uh, display, lots of um, paintings and photographs and such. And then I said, well, where's the literary? And they said, well, um, look for a binder. And all the literary entries are in the binder. And I went, okay. And there was a binder. I mean, they had plastic sleeves on all the pages. I mean, they were nicely done, which is basically the way county fairs, most county fairs exhibit the literary entries. And I just, you know, I live with a muralist who does 40 foot long paintings. And I thought, oh boy, if I ever had a chance to do this, I would do it differently. And then a year later, um, we were asked to actually take it over. And Boris has an interesting story about that, how when we first were asked. <laughs> how you became director? Yeah, initially when we were asked uh, if we were interested in, in uh, 
maybe taking over this Galleria, my, my initial response was a flat no. No, thank you. Um, and it was just, we saw what was, what was required here, and it was just a mountain of work that would have had to have been done. But um, uh, fortunately, we see beyond the immediate moment, and, and Barty and I slept on it um, overnight, and I think it was the next morning we looked at each other and we both agreed that uh, uh, we thought we were meant to do this and we were supposed to do it, and the next thing we knew, we said yes. So that's how that started. And I think um, when I was talking with you, Barty, you said something about, wow, you know, we realized it's 12,000 square feet, we don't have to pay rent, we have it for a week. I mean, what artists, group of artists could ask for more, right? So you could implement a vision. If you, I'm sure you began to form one at that moment and said, wow, here we go. Well, what happened, the initial thing that happened was that we realized that we had a, a large sandbox here. And, and there were other kids on the block. And, uh, but the sandbox had been placed on our front lawn. And so suddenly we had the opportunity to uh, maybe do what we had done as kids, which is to build carnivals and invite people to come and play. And so that's what we're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. It is a carnival. It, literally. Yeah. I mean, literally, but inside here at the writers, at least on the literary stage, it's a carnival too. If you come to any of the literary stage presentation, you can see we're having a lot of fun here. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew, right. Well, I'm so glad you took this over. Um, Barty, you took over as the literary arts director in 2009, and the literary division quickly became the fastest growing department at the fair. So how did that happen? Well, what I came in here doing was I wanted to give writers a presence and a voice. First of all, I had to get the entries out of the binder and up on the wall. I had to get the words up on the wall because we're surrounded by beautiful artwork and photos and quilts and everything else. And so that was my first step. Then I thought I need to give them a voice. And so we had the stage. And what we do here is, um, you know, it was never done before. Uh, apparently we're the only ones in the country doing this at this magnitude. We have something like 56 events throughout the week. And it just mushroomed. And once I became the director and realized what I wanted to do, I knew I couldn't do it alone. And that's when I got really smart and I contacted the San Francisco Peninsula branch of the California Writers Club. Without them, none of this would be happening. Well, without you, none of it would be happening. <laughs> well, then me and then them. <laughs> so it's really how, by involving other people is how you helped it grow. Yes, and, and I think it's been a really great success because it was never about me. It was never about what can I do to make myself more important or to, to promote myself. It was more about writers. What can I do to help the writers of the community? And obviously the response there's a huge community of writers here who saw the opportunity and, and, and jumped on it, which is why it grew so quickly and so well. Yeah, and I think there's also a huge community of writers who still don't know about this, who, you know, we can go beyond the Writers Club and out over more of the peninsula to get people, and into San Francisco, get people to come here and we, participate. We had an entry from Chicago this year, and she actually, I called her up and told her she won, and she said, I think I need to be there. So she <laughs> flew out from Chicago and spent two days with us. It was wow. amazing, yeah. This was one of the contests, literary contest entrants? Yes. That's wonderful. That's a good story in itself, great. Well, Boris, the Fine Arts Galleria has also grown since you've taken over. You were telling me something about the sales of the arts. What have you done to make that happen? And tell us a little bit about that. Well, one of the, one of the things about uh, putting on this show is that uh, uh, Barty, myself, my associate Katie, um, we're very much interested in, in creating a very professional looking environment for local artists to come and to um, feel well represented. Uh, it's hard to get into a gallery. Galleries do what galleries do and they do it well, but, but they're limited in the scope of who they can entertain. And um, our the, the position we're in is one where we can literally show everybody and anybody we want to because we have the space for it, um, unlike a gallery that's quite limited. So one of the things that I, I like to always point out is that 
if you pay your ten dollars, you're going to get hung and you're going to get shown, and we're going to represent you professionally as professionally as we can, and and make sure that we can sell your work for you. Um, so when somebody enters their a contest here, they know that they're well represented. Um, that's not something you always find. Uh, so we're very proud of that. And in terms of actual dollar sales, the difference between how many paint, how much, how many pieces of art you sold the first year and now is significant. Can well, you share that? Well, it is significant. The first, the, the, the first year when we were judges, um, I, I happened to see the records and they had sold about five hundred dollars worth of art uh, out of this show. And um, I think our last figures were somewhere around fifteen thousand uh, dollars. That's over. Uh, this is our sixth show, so that would be over a five-year period. It's grown that much, and um, we have much higher figures that we want to reach. Now, many people say, why do you care about that? It's not about the money, it's about showing local artists. And to me, as a, as a um, commercial artist and as a professional uh, fine artist, that it's very important that um, the whole thing about value for value gets stressed. Um, people will pay a contractor $20,000 to paint a wall, but they'll, you know, they'll get all squirmy if you have to pay an artist three thousand dollars to paint the same wall. And that's just, you know, that's that's screwy. You know, there's something <laughs> wrong with that. We want uh, your real opinion, so yeah. <laughs> we want uh, honesty here. And, and so we are holding up the artist as a valuable asset to the community and saying, you know, you you, you like this, you pay reasonably for it. And our prices are very reasonable because this is a ground level show. But um, uh, we, I don't want our artists to give their work away. I want them to put a value on it and I want people to pay the value that they, they consider for that piece. Wonderful. That's very inspiring to hear you talk like that about the value of art. I really appreciate hearing that on tape. <laughs> Um, so the theme of the uh, Galleria is Carry the Light. Boris, where did this theme come from and, and what does it mean to you? Um, a very deep question. <laughs> um, Not a long-winded answer. No, I know, I know. Um, Carry the Light is, uh, it came from an album cover that I did for a blues player by the name of Kelly Ritchie when I saw her on TV and I sent off my first ever and probably ever um, fan mail email. I said, great show, and that was it. Uh, and she emailed me back, and we started going back and forth. The result was an album cover called Carry the Light, and, uh, um, and the theme song was Carry the Light, and I started using the theme from that with her permission. And um, I work it from here, she works it from Cincinnati, and we do different things, but we had in common the fact that we work with at-risk youth, I in the wilderness, and she through her music. Um, but this is the this this is the theme that we've been running on since the very beginning, and carry the light is about to me. Um, carry the light is about the creative aspect and what that means and how, while it's shown in art mostly um, and in literature and in sculpture and all different parts of art. I see the Carry the Light creative movement as something that touches every part of everybody's life. And so if you look at our entrance sign over there, it says everybody uh, is called to create a masterpiece. And so I believe that the formula for Carry the Light is a creative formula that we can adopt into every aspect of our lives and create a masterpiece with everything that we touch through our intention and through our desire. That's wonderful and very inspiring. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Barty? Well, to me, carry the light means, you know, stepping up and helping others. Because once you help yourself, I mean, once you help others, you're elevated yourself. And it mushrooms from there. And this is tribute to that philosophy. I think the first year I had four or five events and I had a couple of volunteers. And now I've got so many people that are willing to not just help, but to participate, to, to create with us. And, and that is exciting. That's carried the light to me. The fact that it's growing, that people are getting so excited about what we're doing here. And they're willing to put in the time and the effort, which proves that they, that they understand what it means to 
to help one another and, and boost one another with creativity. And the motto of the California Writers Club is writers helping writers. And so I think we're all in this together. We're all carrying our light, sharing our light with each other and carrying it Absolutely. for each other as well. I might add that part of the formula that we're talking about is the, uh, the aspect that we haven't touched on is a mentorship. Is that when you inculcate that formula into your life, I feel it that we're all called to share that with somebody that needs to know that formula. And that mentorship is critical to who we are as creators. Great, thank you so much for that inspiration. You continue to inspire me. And anybody who's listening, I think. Um, Boris, I want to ask you about the Galleria and the work that displayed there. I know that the work of pros and amateurs is displayed side by side. And I'm wondering, um, is there any competition between the levels of artists in the um, work? And how do you decide what pieces to group together? And what do you do if you get some really bad art? Or what you think is really bad art? This is the county fair. There is no such thing as bad art. Uh, the minute we start gauging good art against bad art, and, and, and the minute we start to uh, edit ourselves and our, what we're doing creatively, by making this a juried show, we are no longer the county fair. Because the county fair is about bringing your jams and competing with anybody else that's on that table. And so that's what we do. And believe it or not, the ribbons around here get dispersed all over the place. And first timers when first, sometimes I've even seen a best of show by a first timer. So. It, wow, that's great. Great. Um, and Barty, everybody in the literary, everybody who enters the literary contest gets at least one of their pieces published in the Carry the Light anthology. How, how has that been received? What's been the response to that? I am so proud of that. We're on our third volume of Carry the Light, the anthology of stories, poems, and essays from the San Mateo County Fair. And it's true, everyone who enters gets at least one submission published by Sandhill Review Press. And if someone enters five pieces and four of them win, the four winning pieces will be published. Now, what Boris meant about, you know, we have amateurs for the very first time and we have seasoned professionals and we're all in this together because I know what it's like to struggle to get published. It's really difficult. So our concept was to include everyone. Now, I also tell them you have to be aware that what you send us is what's going to get printed. So be careful. Edit, you know. Edit again. Look for all those errors. Because when you come to me and say, well, there's an error on this page, well, it's your error. So in conjunction with that, that's why we have these workshops. Because we have writers at different levels all coming together. So we have the seasoned professionals helping the new the new writers who are saying, I, I really feel like I need to write and I'm not sure how. So we have all levels and they're all welcome. Gives me an idea for a workshop for next year. <laughs> yeah. So this, is, this event has uh, a lot of challenges, particularly to you as directors. And I'm wondering, um, what is the size of the team involved in planning, managing, and staffing both the Galleria and the literary stage? Well, this year I started in November of uh, 2013 planning with a subcommittee. Um, the subcommittee has grown over the years. I've got very loyal, dedicated uh, volunteers. Here. Sue Barazon's been with me since the beginning and she's responsible for so much of this. Martin Shane Dowd has been here every day as my volunteer coordinator. And um, I say we have probably, what, about 30 people behind just the, um, you know, just here in the literary stage to get this going and to keep it going and to run it. Dave Herschel uh, and Laurel Ann Hill are my stage managers and they've booked all of these events. I couldn't possibly do it by myself. Maureen Killo took over the uh, stage for music at night. That's something that we didn't have before. So it's growing, it's growing tremendously. It's a pretty good size of number of people to manage. And how about you, Boris, for the Galleria? Is there a team that working there, too, a large team? Well, there's a lot of little teams. That's what we have. There's uh, more than one team. There's, there's people that love in taking the art in the other building next door um, before everything else starts. Um, and they, they just love talking to the artists when they're bringing their work in. 
there's people that love being here late at night building these walls um, because we started building our own walls a few years ago um, simply because the event center is uh, quite often shorthanded and so we're behind schedule if we wait so we started taking that on uh, the people that just love arranging art so they, they are our hangers and they come in and do quite a job um, and then there's people that just love the act of being docents and uh, so we have we have different groups that we see at different parts of this whole thing uh, some people stick it all the way through but not you know there's many little groups well i think you end up having being under the most stress of all as the, as the managers of all those little groups i have to tell you this year has been relatively stress-free the bigger we get the easier it gets uh, and only because it, it has a life of its own and um, and also that we've decided that it, it's not worth doing this if we're going to kill ourselves, even though we do incredibly a, a huge amount of physical labor around here. We've decided that it has to be easy if it's going to, if it's going to work at all and it has to be fun. So uh, that is a criteria. You've obviously found a way to make it easy and fun this year. Is there a secret you want to reveal here? I tell myself at every confrontation that, that is coming down the road, Oh yeah, it has to be easy. So by the time that thing reaches me, it's pretty much crawling on the ground. That's cool. I'll remember that. And how do you decompress after the fair? Well, <laughs> do, do we ever? I don't know. I mean, you know, we live together. We've been together 47 years, and so we talk a lot about the fair. And mostly, I'm the one that says, "All right, stop. We have to stop talking about the fair. We need balance in our lives." And Boris could go all here. I mean, he's just a creative dyna dynamic force and we spend a lot of time around the kitchen table drinking coffee and l just last night we were talking about what we're going to do next year at the fair. I don't know if we ever decompress, do we? Yeah, no, it, it's a dream <laughs> and, and when we're sitting there, whether it's the middle of this thing or in the off part of the year, when, when we're talking about it, we're dreaming and when you're dreaming, you're happy. I mean, how, you know, there is no work. It's it's. It's just fun. So what is your vision for the gallery and the literary stage going forward for the rest of the 21st century, or at least the next? <laughs> I'll, I'll answer first. Well, let's see now. Um, we figure we're probably going to get hauled off maybe in about 30 years when we're in our 90s when Matt Cranford, the, the uh, fair manager, has to retire because he's tired of us. Um, I want a bigger stage because I realize we have more people and you know we need a bigger stage. I would love to have uh, these events streaming live and also to be able to archive on our website. I think that would be incredible and um, I don't know, maybe just take over more and more space, who knows? <laughs> Another <laughs> building. <laughs> what do you think? Looking at it a little more philosophically, I, um, somebody said that, that in reality everything that we do is making music, and I can see that. And so, uh, in everything that we do, and I, I've especially said in the last few years I, that when I'm doing a painting, I feel like I'm composing music. I think, I think I'm trying to reach music, and, and so... I can see us applying that thought to everything that we do, and I'd like to see us build bridges with technology department over there, with home arts over here, with, with horticulture on the other side of the ground, of fairgrounds, and creating a, a creative impulse that reaches in all directions. I can see having things that uh, pertain to music, technology, nature, and art, um, all rolled up into one, and touching uh, the individual on a very deep level, and and uh, even having nature awareness be part of it. It's all art. No, I, I have the feeling that your visions are going to happen. And I hope they do. I can see them. You're, you're, you're moving in that direction. It's inevitable. I, I did envision all of this. I did see this. I didn't see it specifically like this, but when, I, when we said, let's do this, let's take this on, this is what I saw. And um, I saw a lot of people gathering here. 
and that's what we're working for. And it's so exciting to see it come to fruition, to actually see the people that I was envisioning and, and expecting to come. Yeah, and we appreciate all of you who are gathered here in this audience, too. This is wonderful. Um, you have been, I want to ask a couple of personal questions. You've been married for many years, I think you said 47 years or something? Well, or we've not been 47. together 47 years. I stole him as a, a young child, uh, childhood sweethearts. High school, right? High school, high school sweethearts. <laughs> You're both artists. You plan this intense event over many months. Um, how do you make it all work together? The marriage, the art that you need to create, and, and doing work like this together? We have separate departments. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to finish that that's sentence good. in a different way. <laughs> separate, separate departments, that's good. <laughs> never underestimate the competitiveness of a husband and wife team. And I think that has helped too, that we just see one another like, ooh, that just grew well. What can I do over here? You know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a, a fun-loving, uh, non-threatening competition in a way. Um, inspiration more than competition in a way or yeah challenge yeah yeah it is we, we piggyback on on one another um, all the time and you both create your own art what do you do what is your your art each of you well, um i'm a muralist uh, so I'll, I'll crank out a mural every now and then um i paint on canvases my grandmother taught me when i was very young and uh, though i didn't paint for almost 30 years. I started uh, painting again in 2000. Uh, and that was a real roundabout story that, that I won't get into, but I uh, didn't expect to ever paint again. But here I am, uh, living the art, the life of an artist. And uh, my, my first love is painting on doors. I love uh, painting on closet doors. You'll see, I have one over there in the middle of the exhibit, uh, but I have a collection of painted doors. And um, that's what I, that's my favorite canvas. It's, a, it's just a perfect canvas. It's got the frame, liner, and canvas all in one. And it's a lot cheaper than a canvas that size. And besides that, people drop them off in my driveway when I'm not looking. <laughs> Were you painting on doors as a child, too? No, no, never. Uh, <laughs> no, my aunt took care of us. She would have killed me. <laughs> and how about you, Barty? What's your art? Well, I am a writer. Um, I was trained as an art therapist, but I do not practice. And I think in, in retrospect, if I had become an art therapist with my own private practice, I probably wouldn't have started writing. I started my first novel about 20 years ago. I'm working on my fourth one now that is finally going to be published. Um, I do short stories. I've written columns for various uh, organizations. Um, illustrated a couple books, um, but I really like to stick with with the um, written word. And um, I have to say I'm so busy helping other writers, I need to write more myself. So after this fair is over, I am going to finish my novel and then work on getting it published and out there. And that will be a whole different chapter of my experience. I haven't done that before. Right, and then you'll be taking the stage here at the fair to talk about your novel, too. That would be exciting. It's easier to talk about other people, I have to say. So, it, like I said, it'll be a new experience for me to stand up here and say, my novel versus their novel. Right. Well, I know we're just about at the end of our um, interview time here or in terms of taping, videotaping. Um, do you, does either of you have something you want to say in closing that we haven't covered? You want to mention the double Virgo effect? <laughs> Actually, we're, um, Boris and I are both Virgos. Our one child, our son, is a Virgo. His wife is a Virgo. And um, we have a little fair baby in the family. Our grandson, Gael Alexander, was born last year, opening day of the fair. And um, he escaped. He's a Gemini. But, um, you know, we have our offices on, on either side of the hallway, and so we, we're very intense. We're happily intense in what we're doing, but bear no mind. I mean, we work a lot, but we love it. Any closing comment you want to make for yeah, us? No, there is. Um, I think the, uh, the main idea around here is that um, you see art everywhere, but it's not really about the art. It's, it's, it's about the creative impulse, like I said before. And, and um, that can mean any variety of things. If you're good hammering nails, there's a good way to do it. 
and maybe there's a negative way to do it. So I say that we have the sandbox, and whatever it is, it can fit in. Whatever you do, there's a place for you if you can help other people, if you can mentor other people, or if you want to learn how to mentor other people. Um, but there's, there's different ways of being creative, and it covers every aspect of our lives, and so we like to play that out here. Um, what it becomes, I have no idea. Art will always be part of it, but I think there's a much bigger picture emerging. Well, thank you. I want to thank you both so much for taking part in this interview. I've really enjoyed talking with you. I know this conversation could go on a long time, but we're out of camera time. In fact, somebody better turn off the camera before we <laughs> uh, get a little bit more, uh, a little less formal here. But um, since we do have the stage for a little longer, we could have some questions for the audience. But if the camera person would um, just turn off video, we'll just capture... Uh... No one can actually take us off, you know. <laughs> oh, that's true. You guys are in charge. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barty, Rosman Kudrin, and Boris Kudrin, director and director. Thank you. Thank you, darling.